Hey, all you cool cats and kittens, it's Miss Tommaso. Um, just as a side note, I have been watching Tiger King. We binge watched my boyfriend and I the entire season in two days. Um, and it is very intense. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest you watch it. Um, it's really fabulous and I love it. And I'm now gonna call everybody um, cool cats and kittens for the rest of our videos. Okay. Um, so today, uh, it's our second video for week four. Today we're going to be talking about section 10.2, which is inscribed angles inside of a circle. Um, so we already took our notes this week on um, major and minor arcs, and now we're going to be talking about some inscribed angles inside of a circle. So to get us started here, we're going to start off with the definition. An inscribed angle is an angle with its vertex on the circle with two sides that are chords. Okay, so inscribed, it's inside the circle and the two points are on the circle themselves as is the vertex. So it doesn't go to the center, it goes to another piece that's actually on the outside of the circle. An intercepted arc is the arc that lies between these two endpoints of an inscribed circle. So this is the inscribed angle right here. This is the angle. The inscribed arc is this piece A to C right over here. Now, the measure of the inscribed angle is equal to half the measure of the inscribed arc. So for example, if I were to tell you that this arc right here is 100 degrees, the inscribed angle, angle A, B, C, would be half of it. So I would take 100 divided by two and I would get 50 degrees on the inside. So to find this angle right here, you take the arc the measure of arc AC, and you divide it by two, right? You take half of it, okay? If you have intercepting a diameter, so remember a diameter means that it goes through the center point and it goes from one edge of the circle to the other edge of the circle. If an inscribed angle intercepts a diameter, so if it goes through the diameter, then it is a right angle. So my measure of angle BAC, BAC. So you see how over here this segment BC is the diameter goes through it. The inscribed angle that is intercepted by that, so that would be this angle A right here, okay? That's angle BAC, that's gonna give me 90 degrees. So this piece right here is 90, and then this would be double 90, which is 180 degrees, right? That's double, this piece is double this small angle on the inside, or this is half of 180, however you wanna look at it. The last one are something called overlapping arcs. So they're arcs that are overlapping each other, right? One on top of the other. So if two, it kind of almost looks like a um, bow tie kind of thing here. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So what does that mean? That means if I take the measure of angle A, B, D, A, B, D. So that's this little piece right here, that's this angle, that would be this arc right here. It is congruent to the arc that overlaps it, the same arc. So if I look at this arc AD from a different perspective, it's also the same as this angle right here. Notice that they share this same arc. So this angle right here in orange is the same as this angle over here in blue. So the measure of angle ABD is congruent or equal to the measure of angle ACD. Okay, so when they overlap, that means they're going to be congruent, they're gonna be exactly the same. 
So now we're going to do a couple practice problems here. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to find the angle or the arc measure depending on which one it asks me to find. Now remember, if it's an angle that I'm asking you to find, I'm going to have the angle symbol. If it's an arc measure, that is a major arc, right? So it's bigger than 180, it'll have three letters. If it's a minor arc, so it's less than 180, it'll only have two letters. So these kind of give you some hints as to what you're looking at for each one of those problems. All right, so let's start with number one. I know that this arc right over here, WY, is 62 degrees. Now, this arc is inscribed. It's not at the center, but it goes to the other edge. That means this angle right here is 62. This angle on the inside, angle WXY, should be half of 62. So I'm just going to take 62 and divide by 2. I get 31 degrees. So this little angle right in here is 31 degrees. Easy peasy. Now, in number two, I give you that this angle on the inside is 113 degrees. And I want to know what the major arc DGF is. Well, here's D. G, F. So it's this angle, right? And here's the small angle. And then I'm taking it and I want to find the arc. So all I'm going to do is I'm going the opposite way. I give you the smaller piece. So instead of dividing by two, I'm going to take this number and I'm going to multiply by two, right? Because it's giving me the greater piece here, this larger piece. So I'm going to take 113 and multiply it times two. If I do that, I get 200. 26 degrees. So my answer for this arc right here is 226 degrees. And remember, if it has three letters, that means it's a major arc, so it's greater than 180. My answer is greater than 180, so looks like I did it right. Number three. Now, we've got what looks like right here is an intercepted diameter. PR is the diameter. Okay, that means if I'm trying to find the measure of angle PQR, PQR, that's this piece right here. Well, since it's intercepted by the diameter, that means this whole big piece right here is 180 degrees. So half of that would be 90 degrees. So this piece right here is 90 degrees. All right, number four, I'm given that this small angle right here is 47 degrees. And I actually, this time I'm looking at arc measure BC. So I actually want to know what this piece, we'll do it in a different color. I really want to know what this piece is over here. Okay, well, I'm going to look at some things that I know for sure. I already can see that side AB is the diameter. Right, because it goes through the center. I also know that this small angle is 47 degrees. If I wanted to get this larger arc that's on the outside right here, arc AC, all I'd have to do is double this smaller angle. So I'm going to take 47 oops, and multiply it times 2. If I do that, I get 94 degrees. So I know this piece in pink is 94 degrees. I want to know, though, this piece in blue. Now notice, if I put the pink and the blue together, I get half of the circle, or 180 degrees, or a semicircle, which is 180 degrees. It's half of a full circle of 360. So if I know that this blue plus the pink gives me 180, to figure out what this blue is, I'm just going to take 180 and subtract the 94. When I do that, I get 86 degrees, so that means this arc that's left over, BC, is 86 degrees. Okay, so you have to be really careful about which part they're asking you to find in each question. All right. Number five, so I look like I'm given some arcs. I'm asked to find the measure of angle JKL. 
So I want to find angle J, K, L. I want to know what this angle is right here. Now notice, if I'm looking at this angle, it intercepts right this arc right here, this larger arc, L, M, J. So that's the piece I'm really trying to find. Now, I already know this piece is 65 degrees. And I know this piece, K to J, is 53. If I were to add all three of those arcs together, I'd get a full circle, which is 360 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 360 and I'm going to subtract the orange and the pink from it. And that will give me what's left over in the blue. That will give me the arc. So I'm going to do 360 minus 65 and 53. Okay, if I add those two together, what I'm really doing is I'm taking 360 and I'm subtracting 118 and I get 242 degrees. So this large arc, this major arc is 242 degrees. But I'm asking for this angle in here. Now I know that this angle is an inscribed angle, so it's half of this larger major arc. So I'm going to take 242 and I'm going to divide it by 2. I get 121 degrees. So this piece in here is 121 degrees. So again, you have to be very careful about what they're asking you to find. <clears throat> All right, number six. Now, you see here, I've got some overlapping arcs. and almost kind of looks like a bow tie. So I'm first trying to find the measure of angle RST. So RST. So I wanna know what this small piece right here is. So I'm really looking to find what this, if I can figure out what this arc is on the outside, I can figure out what this small piece is right here. Now. I don't know what this arc is. However, I know that from T to U is 75, from U to S is 139, and from R to S is 64. I almost have the full circle. To figure out what's left over right here, RT, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 360 degrees, a circle, and I'm gonna subtract these three angles from it. Make sure it's all in there. Okay. Okay. If I do that, right, I add up all these numbers together. I get 278. And if I subtract 278 from 360, I get 82 degrees. So RT right here is 82 degrees. Now, to figure out what this angle is right here, I just take the 82 and I take half of it. So half of 82 is 41 degrees. So this piece right here is 41 degrees. Angle RUT is overlapping. It has the exact same major arc, so these two are going to be or excuse me, minor arc, so these two are going to be congruent. So if this is 41, that means the other angle is 41. And there we go. Now, for the next part here, I'm going to find each value or measure as given to me. So you're going to see and for some of these problems, I'm going to have to actually solve an equation here. So the first one, I see that I've got this angle on the inside here. Okay, it's my inscribed angle. It's 8x minus 9. I also know that this arc out here is 158 degrees. So if I take half of this, I should get what this angle is supposed to equal. So I'm going to take 158, I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to take half of it. If I do that, I get. 79 degrees. That means angle CDE is equal to 79 degrees. So I'm going to write that as an equation. I'm going to say 8x minus 9 is equal to 79 degrees. And then I'm just going to solve it like algebra. 
So add nine. That's 88. And then divide by eight. We get x equals 11 degrees. And I'm done. Easy stuff. Okay, number eight. Same sort of deal, except this time I'm given that this small angle inside is 67, and now I'm trying to find this larger arc over here. Now, I'm given this. I know if I double this small angle, I'll get the arc. So I'm going to take 67, I'm going to multiply it times 2. I get 134 degrees. That means this arc right here, arc LN, is equal to 134 degrees. So I'm going to write that as an equation. There's the arc. It's equal to 134. And then I'm just going to solve it algebraically. So I subtract 58 on both sides. I get 76. And then I divide by 4. I get... 19 degrees and I'm done okay so just as a little maybe make we make a little bit of a note here if I multiply so here's here's how I can remember the difference between the two so I can either do two times the angle right double the angle two times the angle that should give me the arc or, so that's like if I give you a problem like this where I give you the angle, right? You just multiply it by two, that'll give you the arc. Or if you go the other way, if I give you the arc, I can take the arc divided by two, and that will give me the angle. Okay, so maybe that's like a little bit of a cheat that you kind of want to write down. So you make sure you always know which way you're going. So the angle is the smaller one. The arc is always going to be the larger one. All right, uh, there we go, number nine. Okay, I'm going to solve for x. The first thing that I notice here is that it goes through a 90, or excuse me, it goes through the center. So this is the diameter right here, wy is a diameter. And because that's a diameter, that means automatically that this angle right here is a 90 degree angle. So I'm just gonna write that as an equation and then I'm going to solve for it. So 13x minus one equals 90. I set it up like an equation, I add one. And then I divide by 13 and I get x equals seven degrees not too hard okay we're gonna skip number 10 that's why there's an x over it go to 11. okay so i'm going to solve for x i see that i have the smaller angle in here that i'm trying to find i already know that this arc a b is 92 and that arc b to c is 162. To figure out what's left over for AC, I'm going to take 360 degrees and subtract these two sides from it. I don't really need that in the front there. 92 plus 162. Okay. Like this. Didn't need that. Okay. Still in there we go. Okay. So I'm going to add together 92 and 162. I get. 254 and if I subtract 254 from 180 I get 106 degrees so this arc AC is 106 degrees now remember in order to find the angle I take half of this arc and that will give me what the angle is right so I take the arc divided by 2 and that gives me the angle so if I take 106 and I divide it by two, I get 53 degrees. So this angle right here is 53. 
And so now I'm going to take this equation and set it equal to 53, and then I'm going to solve it. So the hardest part is really just being able to set it up correctly. All right, so I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide by 7. I get x equals 9 degrees. Okay, number 12. Again, it looks like I've got a similar sort of situation here. Um, I already know that this arc right here is 120. I know this small piece, this angle on the inside is 67 degrees. To find the arc on the outside, I take the angle and I multiply it times two. If I do 67 times two, I get 134. So I know that this arc right here is 134, which helps me because, right, so I already knew that this piece right here is 120. But I'm trying to figure out the x, and the x happens to be on this arc right here. So I want to figure out what this orange piece is. Now, in order to figure that out, I can say, all right, I'll take the whole 360, and I'll subtract the pink piece and the blue piece, because that will give me what's left over for my orange piece. So if I add those two together, I get 360 minus 254. And if I do that, 254, I get 106 degrees. So this piece in orange is 106 degrees. So I'm going to write that this equation is equal to 106 degrees, and then I'm going to solve it. And then it's just algebra. So I subtract 21 from both sides. I get 5x equals 85. And then I divide both sides by 5. And I get x is 17 degrees. OK. Number 13, similar, it's still the same sort of thing. It's just this time, instead of me actually writing it, I told you what the equations were and you actually have to plug them in yourself on the picture. So I know the measure of angle FGH, FGH, I know that this small angle right here is 6X plus 21. I also know that FJH, so this whole thing, is 17x minus 28. I'm asked to find FJH. I'm asked to find what this whole thing is in pink. Now, I know if I take 2 times my angle, it should give me my arc, right? 2 times the angle equals my arc. So if that's my setup, let's just plug in what's given to us. 2 times the angle is 6x plus 21 equals the whole arc, 17x minus 28. And now it's just a algebra problem. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this to so 2 times 6x gives me 12x. 2 times 21 gives me 42. And then I just rewrite the right side. Now I'm going to get all my x's together, so I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. So I get 42 equals... 5x minus 28. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 28 to both sides. Kind of run out of room here. 
so I get 70 equals 5x. And then I'm gonna get, move it over, the x by itself. So 70 divided by five is 14. Now, that's great that I have the x, but it asks me to find f, j, h. So I come back to my picture. f, j, h is this whole pink spot, the whole pink arc. So I've got an equation there, 17x minus 28. I'm gonna take my 14, I'm gonna plug it in to the x, and I'm gonna solve for it. So to find the measure of f, j, h, I'm gonna take this equation, 17x minus 28, and I'm gonna plug in the number 14 for my x. So I'm gonna do 17 times 14 minus 28. So you get 238, and if I subtract 28 from that, I get that the measure of arc f, j, h is equal to 210 degrees. All right, one more like that, similar to it. Okay. If the measure of angle STU is 5x minus 16, so STU is this small piece right here, and the measure of arc SU is 12x minus 5, so here's SU, this is 12x minus five. Find the measure of angle STU. I wanna know what is this pink angle here. Now, remember, if you double your angle, two times the angle equals the arc. So that's how I'm gonna set up this equation again. Two times the angle equals my arc. So, my angle is 5x minus 16, and that is equal to my arc. And oh, I look, I just made a mistake. It was a 50, good thing I looked at that. 12x minus 50. Now I'm just gonna go through. It's a normal algebra problem like what I just did. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I distribute this two to everything inside of the parentheses. So two times five x is 10 x. Two times a negative 16 is a negative 32. And then I rewrite the right side. Now I'm gonna get all my x's together so I'm gonna subtract 10 x on the left. I get negative 32 equals 2x minus 50. Now I'm gonna add 50 to both sides. I'm gonna make sure I'm really, really careful with my signs here. So I get 18 equals 2x, and then I'm gonna divide by two on both sides. I get x equals nine degrees. Now, Using that x, I'm gonna find the measure of angle STU. So STU was 5x minus 16. I'm gonna plug in the number nine wherever I see an x. Okay, so measure of angle STU is 5x minus 16. Where I see the x, I'm gonna plug in a nine. So five times nine is 45 and 45 minus 16 gives me that the measure of angle STU is 29 degrees. Okay, so now we are finished with that first part of inscribed angles. Um, and intercepting diameters and overlapping arcs. So we've done an example of each one of these types. And now we're gonna move on to our last section here um, called, oops, should zoom out a little bit? Ooh, wrong way. There we go. Called inscribed quadrilaterals. Now, inscribed literally means inside of. So we're gonna be talking about a quadrilateral, a four-sided figure that is inside of a circle. Okay, so if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are 
supplementary. Okay, supplementary means that if I take the two angles and I add them together, I should get 180 degrees. So they should add up to 180 degrees or a straight line. So in circle P on the right, I've got my quadrilateral A, B, C, D. So if I do angles that are opposite of each other, opposite really means diagonal or across, however you want to think about it. So if I add together angle A plus the one that's opposite of it, angle C, I should get 180 degrees. Same works the other way. If I add angle B together with the opposite is angle D, I should still get 180 degrees. And remember, we've already talked about quadrilaterals. They always add up to be 360. And look, if I were to add 180 plus 180, the whole thing gives me 360 degrees, which is both a quadrilateral and a circle. So we're going to go through. We're just going to do, we only have five examples here. We're going to find each value or measure. Okay. So, number one, I have angle M right here. The one that is across from it would be angle K. So, in order to find angle K, I know 45 plus this angle should give me 180. So, what I can do is I can take 180 and I can subtract 45. I get 135 degrees for angle K. Same thing if I go the opposite ways. I know that if I add angle J together with angle L, I should get 180. So I'm going to take 180 and I'm going to subtract angle L, which is 92, and I get 88. So angle J is 88 degrees. Easy, easy peasy stuff. So as long as they're across from each other, they are supplementary. They add up to 180. Let's try another one here. Okay. I see a couple different things. I see I'm given one of the angles, but I'm not given any others. So the easy one to do first would be to say, ah, oh, angle Q and angle S are opposite. So they should add up to be 180 degrees. So I'm gonna take 93, or excuse me, 180, and I'm gonna subtract 93. If I do that, I get 87 degrees. So I know that angle S is 87 degrees. Okay, now I don't know what angle P or angle R are. All I know is that if I add those two together, I should get 180. Now you're also gonna see some things on the outside. I see that arc P Q is 126. I also see that angle P to S is 90 degrees. Okay. Now, I see, if I'm looking there, this is a major arc, Q, P, S. This major arc creates angle Q, R, S. Look at that. Right? So now we have to go back to what we learned before. I know this whole entire arc right here, angle, or excuse me, arc SPQ is 126 plus 90. If I add 126 plus 90, I get 216 degrees. So I know this whole thing is 216 degrees but I'm trying to find the inscribed angle. This angle should be half of this major arc. The major arc is 216, so I'm gonna divide it by two. If I divide it by two, I get 108 degrees. So angle R is 108 degrees. Now, to find angle P, I know that P and R are supplementary, so they add up to 180. 
So the last step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 180 and I'm gonna subtract 108 from it. And when I do that, I get 72 degrees. So this angle P is 72 degrees. So you kind of have to use all the information that we've learned, not just the supplementary angles, because you are gonna still see some inscribed angles as well. You have to use that information to help you answer these questions too. Okay, number three. I already see that I do not have any of the four angles inside of my inscribed quadrilateral. However, I do see that arc AB is 39 and arc BC is 61. Those arcs, arc AC, creates angle ADC. So I'm gonna figure out what this arc is right here, and then I'm gonna take half of it to figure out this angle on the inside. So if I add, essentially I'm doing 39 plus 61 to get the arc, and then I'm gonna take half of it, so I'm gonna divide that by two. So if I add 39 and 61, I get 100, and 100 divided by two is 50. So that means angle D is 50 degrees. There's one. Now, I can figure out angle B, that's across from it, right, opposite, because angle B and angle D should add up to be 180 degrees. So if I do 180 minus 50, I'm gonna get what that angle is. So if I do that, I get 130 degrees. That means angle B is 130. Great, so I've got two of the sides already. I still have to figure out the other two, or two of the angles, excuse me. Now, I see if I look for angle A right here, angle A is C to A to D. If I look here, I see I've got that arc C, D gives me 147. right? And I'm looking for this angle A right here. So this angle A is really if I were to just take those sides and have them kind of go further out here, here's where my angle is. This angle includes the 61 and the 147. It's this whole piece, this entire arc right here. So I'm going to find this entire arc and then I'm going to divide it by two. I'm gonna take half of it to figure out what this angle A is. So to figure out angle A, I'm doing 61 plus 147, and then I'm dividing that by two to figure that out. So if I do that, I get 208, and I divide that by two, I get 104 degrees. So angle A is 104 degrees. Now, angle A and angle C are supplementary, so to find angle C, I'm gonna take 180 and I'm gonna subtract 104 from it. And when I do that, I get 76 degrees. So you're using a lot of different information to help you answer each one of these problems. All right, two more and then we are finished. All right, we're gonna solve for X now. This one looks pretty easy, right? Because I've got angle E given to me, and the angle that's opposite angle E is angle G, which is also given to me just as an equation. I know if I add angle G and angle E together, I should get 180, right? So if I add angle E plus angle G, I should get 180 degrees because they're supplementary. Well, I already have numbers or an equation for each one, I'm just gonna plug them in. So I've got 68 plus angle G is 9x minus five and set that equal to 180 and then I'm just solving it like an algebra problem, so simple. So I can put a 68 and a negative five together. I get 63 plus 9x equals 180 I want the x to be by itself, so I'm gonna subtract 63 from both sides. It's gonna cancel 
making sure we can see everything. Yep. One. Okay, so I get 117. And then I divide both sides by 9. I get x equals 13 degrees. And I'm finished. All right, let's do one more. Now, again, I've got a quadrilateral. I'm given angle V right here, and I'm given angle T. They are opposite angles, so I know that if I add angle V and angle T together, I should get 180 degrees. So I'm just gonna take those and plug them in. So angle V is 133 plus 62 minus 5x equals 180. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to combine some like terms. I can put 133 and 62 together and I get 195. Next thing I want to do is get the x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 195 from both sides. I get negative 5x equals negative 15. And then I divide both sides by negative 5. I get x equals 3, and we're in degrees. Okay, so you do not have to finish those last three that are there. We are now finished with our second section here, which was 10.2 inscribed angles. So you are now ready to go back online to Edmodo and complete your 10.2 homework and then make sure you submit it into the proper Edmodo assignment. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me and I hope you guys have a great day.